yesterday we had a lot of the, the staff that could make it that do things for to make the little country church successful as they said what they do and uh, presented their ministries I realized just how many people are behind the scenes that make us a success and though I'm often seen as the face of I thank God for those who are always ministering to people whether it be our, our widows or through prayer, our ladies, our children, our youth, amen, our band. They're, they're just people always behind the scenes doing things. And I often think of this man when it comes to this time of the year. As a matter of fact, I entitled this message, The Unsung of the Greatest Song Ever Sung. The Unsung of the Greatest Song Ever Sung. Now, you, you can argue with me if you want about the greatest song, but in my heart, Jeannie, I think it was when the angels came down from heaven and said, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Amen. And there's, now they didn't, we made that song up with what they said. We don't know exactly how they sung it. I'm sure they did a lot better job than I did. But the issue was, after 400 years of darkness between Malachi and Matthew, there was an awaiting, there was a, a believing for, there was an expectation. And then the angels show up and begin to share the pronunciation that Christ the King was coming. Amen. But behind the scenes is this one who's standing among the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. Seldom referred to in the story is Joseph, the father of Jesus. Amen. He is the unsung of the greatest song ever sung. He has moral courage. He was an ordinary man. He lived an upright life. He restrained his anger, amen, at times and chose to treat Mary with love. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Joseph resisted societal pressure. The pressure was to divorce her because she was pregnant and they had not uh, been together as husband and wife. Joseph protected the child, though, whenever the life of the child was in danger. And if you look at his background, amen, out of most stories, you're going to see angels, you'll see Jesus, you'll see Mary, and there's Joseph, always in the back, but not under, uh, we don't often pick up on him. I believe he was rugged, I believe he was brave. You know, when God looked down on earth, and he had to find a man to set the, uh, the Israelites free from Egypt, he found Moses, and he spoke to Moses, Moses went through the, the ten plagues, you know, of, of, of uh, doing things to make uh, Egypt, a Pharaoh to uh, allow the Israelites to go. But through all that, he was a man who stuttered, but he was a man of tremendous confidence as far as knowing what God would do in his life. God always picked somebody out. And when he looked down on earth, he had to find two. And he found Joseph, and he found this young virgin by the name of Mary. Now, we know about Mary's excitement of her pregnancy and all of those things. But here's Joseph. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 says, Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. It was not something he decided. It was something he discovered. Now, pay attention to what I'm fixing to tell you. Amen. God's not hiding things from you. He's hiding things for you. Joseph didn't know, he, he, next thing, he would have a child, but it was hid. It wasn't hid from him. Amen. It was hid for him. It was not something he participated in to make happen. It was something he was assigned to. So God assigned this man. Now, if you uh, look at the story properly, Joseph's probably late 40s, maybe early 50s. Mary, probably 15, 16 years of age. It doesn't look like it should go together, does it? But God chose this man, and he would not birth it. And this is important in life. There are things that you don't birth, but you support. Amen. You didn't birth it. You, you weren't there for the birthing or the conception of it, but you were there to support it and look after it. Many of you were not a part of this church when it was birthed. Well, you know, when this thing was birthed, God, God did a great thing to make it happen, but you came along and you supported it. As a, a dad, let me just say this, a stepdad, there are things, there are kids I didn't birth. But thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I've been supporting it. Amen. Can I get an amen? Three adopted children. And that's the way life is. There are times that God will look at you and say, you know what? I, I, I can't depend on this one or this one, but I can depend on this one right here to support this. The mission of any stepdad or mom is to support oftentimes that which they did not birth. The mission of any added to the church is to do that. Joseph, the scripture teaches, is a just man. Matthew chapter 119. When Joseph, uh, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, 
and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. The word just is a righteous man. His custom was to do what was right. God knew that about him, and he chose Joseph. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7, the just man shall walk in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. God not only had to find a woman to believe, he had to find a man who could trust. And you got to trust the fact that, okay, oh, all right, okay, this has never happened before, that a, a, a girl, a virgin, is pregnant. But I got to trust God to believe that this thing is really about what God says it is. And he made right decisions. Matthew 1.18, this is how the birth of Jesus was and came about. Was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, let's take a minute here. Because this affects everybody I know. Joseph said, I will divorce her before I disgrace her. Now, I know a lot of people, and, and we, we struggle with this issue of divorce. It, divorce is a terrible thing for children. It's a terrible thing, the breakup, the dissolution of marriage. But the bottom line is, most of the people I know have been through it. And when I look at this, I see that he said, I will divorce her before I disgrace her. Uh, according to the law of Deuteronomy chapter 22, she would be stoned to be found pregnant before marriage. So here, Joseph not only had to deal with his own conscience, he had to protect her. He had to look after her. He had to make sure that nobody laid a hand on her. Uh, to me, this is one of the most powerful signs of love. Amen. That, you know what, you know, we've not been together physically. I don't know her physically, but she's pregnant, and I believe that which is in her is of the Holy Ghost. And if I allow this moment, if I, if I divorce her, or if I, if I, uh, I don't want to disgrace her, but I sure don't want to see her get stoned. And then he had a dream. Somebody say a dream. Dreams are powerful, aren't they? you you got to realize, you're, I, I get dreams all the time now. The older I get, the more I dream. You know, Joel chapter 2 said, your old men were going to dream dreams, your young men going to see visions. Amen. And the older I get, I used to have visions when I was young. I'd have visions of building churches. I had visions of preaching uh, all over the world. I had visions of doing things that, that just, you know, I just couldn't wait to do it. I, and, and a lot of those visions came true now that I'm older. I have dreams. Amen. And you pop in my dreams at times. You know, some of you I barely know. I just know you by face pretty much. But you pop into my dreams. And I'll see people. And I see, I wake up. I write things down. I ponder it. So here's Joseph. The scripture says in Matthew chapter 1 verse 20. But while he thought, he's still pondering the idea of divorcing Mary here. Of not marrying her, if you would. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. Hopped into his dreams. Saying, Joseph, you son of David. Fear not to take unto you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son and call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. This dream affected his life. This dream shook him up. This dream is mentioned five times in this chapter. We got dreams. Four of them went to Joseph. One went to the wise men. That first dream here, I mean, when he got it, he said, remember who you are. Joseph, son of David. Sometimes you got to forget uh, what other people say about you. you got to remember what God says about you. Amen. And at this moment, he says, David, Joseph, you're the son of David. Fear not. I want to remind you of something, son. You are come from the seed of David. To everyone else, you're no one. But to me, you are someone. I know your lineage. I know where you came from. To everybody else, you're a carpenter. But to me, you're a contractor. God says to Joseph, for me to do my thing, you're necessary. Isaiah chapter 11, back up 800 years ago. He says, and there shall come forth the rod out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. A, from the stem of Jesse. Now, you've seen branches and stems. I often, and it's not to be derogatory, mean, or condescending. But I will often call young men puppy. I've been calling folk puppy. I've called Ramirez puppy for five years. Amen. And, I, you know, and I, I'm not encouraging you to do it. But I just look at folk and realize, you know, I'm, I'm old enough. And a lot of folk around me just puppy. That's what he's saying here. A stem. Amen. Going to come out of Jesse. Amen. Something small. But he will come out. 
Now watch this. A record, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, a record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. So God again, go back to the beginning, Genesis chapter 3, that God was going to take the heel of the Savior and crush the head of the devil. And he took that seed, and he ran it all the way through the Old Testament, and he's hiding it. And, and Satan keeps trying to, to destroy all the little boys. You, re, you read during the time of Moses, they're trying to start, destroy all the little boys. And you keep moving that seed, and then God ran that seed through Rahab the prostitute. And Satan never thought to look there. Amen. And he keeps running this seed through, and he gets it all the way up into the New Testament. Amen. To Joseph, amen, the son of David. So he's got to come out of this line. Now remember, he says, remember who I am. He says to him, fear not. Anytime God is about to bring something to pass, he proceeds it with the words, fear not. He's always feared. Don't be afraid. Thank you. Because I'm a little nervous about this situation. First off, I've never been a daddy. Second off, I've never been the daddy of God. You know, it's one thing for God to say, you adopt this kid, put him in the Navy. Amen. You adopt this guy or you, you have this child and you do this or that. But all of a sudden now, God, not only are you telling me that Mary is pregnant, but that she's carrying the Christ child. I'm a little nervous about all this. But he says to him, fear not. Amen. Don't be afraid. The words to Abram in a vision was fear not. The words to Jacob in a dream was fear not. Luke chapter 1 verse 30, the words to Mary when she was discovered she was pregnant was fear not. Remember what I said, Matthew chapter 1 verse 22. We're just staying in this chapter. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord. Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they'll call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with you. So don't be afraid that that which you are looking after, that which you are protecting, is God with us. Second thing, Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, protection. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Who are they? They are the wise men. How many were there? There were three. I mean, no, there wasn't three. This is the wise men. They have an entourage with them. Yes, they have three gifts, but that doesn't mean they're three wise men. Uh, this is when Jesus is two or three years old. What does that mean? That the wise men were not at the nativity. The wise men were not staring at the goats and the sheep and the, and the cows and looking at little baby Jesus in Bethlehem. The wise men were not there. Amen. As a matter of fact, if we studied this out and broke it down, we'd realize that these wise men were probably studied under a man named Daniel. And that Daniel taught them to read the stars. And they waited for hundreds and hundreds of years in search for the Christ child. And when the star appeared, they moved. And the scripture says they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures. Why do you give gifts? Why, why are we frantically buying gifts and stuff right now? This is why. This is why we give gifts at Christmas. Amen. Because the wise men brought gifts and put them under the tree. The wise men brought gifts and brought them to the Christ and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So here they go in. Herod, uh, you, you remember first they went and found Herod. Herod said, when you find a Christ child, hey, let me know where he's at because I want to go worship him. You know, I'm such a cool daddy, you know, and I, I'm all into this Jesus coming to, to earth stuff. Don't tell, don't tell Herod. So here then they leave. When they get there, they go to sleep. In their sleep, the angel pops into their dream and says, hey, don't go back toward Herod. He will kill the baby. He's looking to kill the baby. So when they wake up, they say, we're going another direction. So they went another route. When they had gone, I don't know if it was the next day or two days, but after they gone, the angel just hung around. The angel didn't leave. The angel jumped into their dreams, and now the angel's waiting on Joseph to go to sleep. And when Joseph goes to sleep, then the angel jumps in. Hey, man, where were we at? Uh, yeah, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to here, then, then they had gone, and the angel of the Lord appeared to who now? Joseph, in a dream. Same angel, I'm just hanging out, amen, waiting on him to go to sleep. When he goes to sleep, I got a message for him. Hopped inside his head, he said, get up, take the child and his mother, escape to Egypt, stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. 
So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled that the Lord had uh, said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. This spirit of a guardian to look after, to protect. And I, I know all of you in here, you're not biologically connected with every child in this building. But to have a spirit of a guardian. Amen. To protect, to look after one another, to care for one another. A person entrusted by law with the care of a person. Again, he didn't birth this baby, but he protected it. And by now, the angel has spoken to Mary. The angel spoken to Joseph twice. And he said, you know what? If, I had a, if that angel shows up, I'm going to listen to him. So when, when he told Mary, Mary, we fit and take another hard trip, baby, whatever you say. Amen. I'm with you. God bless a woman that believes in her man. Can I get an Amen. Amen. So when they went to Egypt, the word told them there, there are times to stay and there are times to fight. There are times to hear the voice of God and remove yourself from danger. And then there are times, to, you know, I, a couple years ago, I stood in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. I bowed my chest out. I put my foot down as the water was rising. And I said to myself, Jerry... You fit in the drown. My kids and family came in, and they escorted me off that property. David and I left. I said, man, we got to go back and get the dog. We went back and got a dog through the midst of a flood. And it, we, we're fortunate that we didn't drown trying to do it, but we did it. But the bottom line is, there's a time to stay, and there's a time to go. Amen, Joseph? Amen. So you you got to know when to do it. At this time, he realized it was a time to go. Hosea chapter 11 verse 1 says, when Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. Again, all of these things, we look back on them, but they're fulfilling prophecy. It's hard to fulfill prophecy as you move forward because you can't, you can't see it. You got, to, you got to trust God because you sure can't trace right now. So you got to believe him. Then the plan gets a little bit clearer. Matthew chapter 2 verse 19. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. So the angel's following him. Then this blesses me. So I don't believe the angel was just in his dreams. I believe his angel went forward to protect him. I believe the angel looked after him. If you don't believe in angels, then you don't have children. Amen. I believe in angels, man. Angels have always just, I've always felt like the, uh, with accidents and things, and, you know, uh, it might have hurt when you hit the ground, but I believe an angel was there with you. Amen. I know it was your wife. You told me years ago Dee was an angel. You said she's always up there harping about something. <laughs> but when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel. Amen. For they are dead, which sought the young child's life. And he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came to the land of Israel. This had to do with his destiny. When you follow the word, your dream, he will tell you when the coast is clear. Uh, you know, it's important to live life in such a way that there's peace in the direction that you go. And I believe as Joseph began, and if you look at the map and how he moved, amen, from, from his hometown to Bethlehem, Bethlehem to, to, to Egypt, Egypt to Nazareth, Nazareth, you know, he's, he's moving, but there's peace about this. Matthew 2, 22. But when he heard that Archaeus did reign in Judea, in the room of his father Herod, in other words, now Herod has died. His son is now the leader. He was afraid to go there because, how I many know, sometimes the children are meaner than their daddy. And in this case, it was that way. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and he dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. The very name Nazareth suggested insignificance. It's like Crosby. Amen. It's, uh, it's, it's just an outskirt town on a big city. Amen. It's Nazareth. It's a shoot. It's a sprout off of that. The name is prophetically given about the Messiah. Matthew chapter 2 verse 23. The fact that Jesus grew up in Nazareth was a sufficient reason for being despised. Joseph, as you'd come on up. I have a heart for the small towns. You know, I thank God for the the wonderful things that go on in big cities that you could go to. But I like small town America. 
I like, I like going through the, I like the parades. I like the, the connection. I like the little diners. Amen. I, I, I like eating in the back of a general store, a good fried bologna sandwich. There's just something about being there. It's the uh, people are more uh, genuine, if you would. Amen. Where I'm from, when you drive down the road, you wave at one another. Your hands on the steering wheel and you flip your fingers up. Two fingers go up. Hallelujah. Amen. And you wave at one another. If you don't wave, they're going to talk about you. They'll know you're a stranger. Amen. Here Jesus goes to a little town called Nazareth. Next time you look at the nativity scene, you see Joseph standing in the background. I want you to understand. He is the unsung of the greatest song ever sung. Had it not been for Joseph. Now, the history of Joseph pretty much goes unknown. We know that when Jesus turns her at about age 12, Joseph disappears off the scene. And to me, it's just like God. You know... Some people think, you know, when I'm gone, everybody going to miss me. Every, every, listen, God will just move you out of the way, and he'll bring somebody else on. But I believe he raised Jesus up to be a man's man. I don't see Jesus ever being pansy, weak. I see him as a man's man. Amen. So he brings him up because now you've got to protect your mama. You got to look after her. She had other children after this, but Jesus is the elder brother. And at this moment, Joseph, he just disappears. And at times in my life, I'll ask myself, God, could I ever just disappear? And I'm not saying, I'm, this is not part of dreams. Or, I'm just saying, can I just disappear and things go on? And the answer is always yes. Yesterday, I received a message last night. From a young boy named Eric Du Bois. Eric lives in Italy. He's in the army. His daddy was Pat Du Bois. Captain Kangaroo, I called him. Captain Kangaroo died a couple of years ago. Uh, he wasn't a real Captain Kangaroo. He just looked like him. Pat Du Bois was one of my closest ministry friends. I loved that man. He got cancer. Fought it for as long as he could. In the early 60s, he passed. And Eric sends me a message, Pastor, I don't understand it. I miss my daddy. I need my daddy. I think about Jesus. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know he's the son of God. But to know that this man, Joseph, took your mother, believed your father, that that which was in her was of the Holy Spirit, defended her, listened to the voices of angels, and moved her, to protect her and provide for her, place after place. I often wonder to myself, how much of an impact did Joseph have on the life of Jesus as he came up? The unsung, the unsung of the greatest song ever sung. Children need courageous moms, dads, mentors. Amen. They need people to stand up in a hard time right now. They need to see that. God is still at work creating, I believe. He's not done. He's not done creating courageous people. And he puts you in a situation oftentimes to see how you're going to handle it. I believe sometimes being behind the scenes is enough. So I want to speak to you, those of you that feel like you've been behind the scene, that nobody's noticed you. I believe being unsung may be one of the greatest songs ever sung. Amen. Because without you, all this would not be possible. One day, one day, even your kids, your grandkids and others are going to look, remember. They're going to say, you know what, I remember Papa. I remember Grandma. I remember what they did. Amen. That's what this season is about for me. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. Spirit of God, I thank you. I thank you for bringing to thoughts over and over of the things that we've done that nobody knows we did to be a blessing to children, God, to be a blessing to others. Lord, when we gave when nobody else was, God, when we reached out and, and we just did it because we love you. And in so doing, we were a blessing. God, I thank for the spirit of protection on this house. That you protect this house. That angels would visit us in our sleep. I don't believe it's over. Angels to believe, to speak to us in our sleep. And we know and can be confirmed by the word of God that you're speaking into our lives. I thank you for life this year. I pray for my young friend, Eric who misses his daddy so much. One day we'll be together again. But until that time, God, I thank you for Pat's love for you, 
his love for the unlovable. God, I thank you that he spoke into my life. I'm a better man because of him. I bless you in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise in here. I don't want to get much of anything like that, guys. I just want to tell you, I, I, I miss people during this time of the year. I'll miss my dad, my sister. I'm going to miss people this time of the year. H, can we put the buckets up front again? Amen. Clanton, I don't mind you having a bucket in the back if you'd like. But I, I just want to make sure that if you want to bring forth your giving. Amen. Many times, sometimes we, we, we don't do the right thing by it. Uh, what I mean by that is, is we flippantly flip our finances. I've been carrying my tithe check now for three days. I wrote it out the first thing. As soon as I got my check, I wrote my tithe check. If I didn't do that, then all of it would have went to insurance or a credit card or this, that, and the other. So I want to make sure I get my tithe written out. So if you're writing a check, reach down and get an the envelopes there. You see envelopes running? Amen. That you get hold of an envelope. On the flip side, amen, I, uh, if you're giving by your phone or online, thank you. Amen. We've had an increase in that. and It's been such a blessing. Some of you have gift cards that you've brought to give to those who are in need. Drop them in the bucket too, and we'll make sure those get to people. I have a list of people that we're uh, giving, giving to now. And those that brought your gifts, unwrapped gifts, Mike, we're going to gather when and where. Okay, let me just repeat this. Bull Silas Park in New Caney, there's going to be a car show, and that's where we deliver the gifts for the hospital, the Shriners Hospital for the children. Is that right? So here's what I want y'all to do. You can meet me at the camp at 1030. Amen. And we can just ride over because I'm going to fill y'all's vehicles with toys. My car can't hold what all y'all brought. Amen. So. I know. Okay, we're going to take care of all that, though. But if, but if you got you got toys, we want to make sure that we get them out to the ranch this week. Amen. And then we'll get them all over to the to the Shriners. Tuesday night, if you want to bring to, uh, toys here Tuesday night during the prayer meeting, two or more at 7 o'clock. Amen. Travis will bring them, too. David, if you come on up. Amen. Whatever announcements uh, I left you. All right. Uh, yeah, we do have the angel tree as well. That's give donations offering with the tithe um, by December 20th toward families in need in Christmas. A uh, pastor will see to it that it goes toward families that have connected with us, which is important. The Bible talks about give, especially to those in the household of faith. So that's why we try to bless those that are connected to the house. Because it's important. Amen. There's, there's people in this time that absolutely need some help. And we want to help them. But we need you guys' help. We need you guys to be able to let us know who, who needs help. So we can get it to the right places. Um, Tuesday night also we're going to have youth. So uh, tell your kids, grandkids, friends, kids, whoever. Tell them, come on, we're going to hang out. going to have some pizza. going to learn about uh, some, some Jesus. Because uh, believe it or not, even at a young age, we're inundated with the world's propaganda and we need to begin to teach them that our lives are based and founded on the word of Christ. Amen. Come on. Come on. So that's what we're going to be doing this week. Um, also, uh, Pastor, you said spaghetti. It's actually going to be chicken spaghetti. Oh. She, she wanted me to make sure I, I said that. I, me neither, Pastor. I'm going to be honest. With you. I never heard of chicken spaghetti. It came to Crosby one time. They were serving it. I love it now. I'm like, yeah, give me that chicken spaghetti. <laughs> and so uh, I, I, I love chicken spaghetti, but she did say that if you cannot eat chicken spaghetti, they will have a small batch. Yeah, that's what I say. She told me that it, for somebody else, that if you can't eat chicken spaghetti, they will have normal spaghetti, but it won't be as much of it. So whatever normal spaghetti is, right? <laughs> uh, red sauce spaghetti, is that better? Red sauce spaghetti, white sauce spaghetti, okay? But not Alfredo spaghetti. Don't, don't get them confused. So many spaghettis. <laughs> God bless Italians. <laughs> there will be food and bread. And salad? And salad. So, so I'm here. So, Sunday at 6 o'clock. Be here next week. 
Uh, I love you guys. Like Pastor said, man, it, this is the time of year that we get. It's it's good for you guys to be around because we get to hang out with you, make new memories with you, uh, so that one day that it, we don't know tomorrow. We may this may be the last time I ever see any of y'all. Who knows? So I just want to let you guys know from the bottom of my heart, my family's heart, all the staff at the Little Country Church, we're so blessed to have you guys as partners with us in this thing. Amen. Today we're believing God for. Jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Bills paid off. Settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns. Debts demolished. Royalties received. Favor, success to the kingdom. I bless you guys this week. I'm thankful for you. Have a good one. Get your kids.